Today we're going to do something different. We know we got a lot of automotive videos. Today we're going to do a Husqvarna blower. Uh, this is a 150. Uh, you know, built somewhere, manufactured somewhere between 2013 and 2015. Uh, this is a relatively new blower. You can see the aluminum's real clean. It's got low run hours on it. Um, you can tell by the exhaust pipe here. When I took this apart, nothing was changed. You can tell by the exhaust pipe. There's hardly no run time on this thing. Uh, however, unfortunately, we picked this up for about 50 bucks. Um, you can see that somebody obviously didn't add the right fuel mixture. Now this is on the exhaust side. Uh, they didn't add the proper two-stroke to this. Uh, the proper amount of uh, oil to the fuel. Uh, and this is what happens. Scarred piston. Uh, the jug destroyed on the exhaust side. Now, some people say this could be to improper fuel mixture. I uh, mean running too lean. Uh, I don't think running too rich would cause this problem, but running too lean probably could. But this is pretty early failure. This this is a sign that somebody used uh, straight gasoline without two-stroke oil, or not enough. Uh, 50 to 1 ratio is a safe ratio, even though some require less, some require more. Uh, 50 to 1, you, sh you shouldn't have this much failure. Uh, or this kind of failure. This early on, at least. Yeah, not this early. <clears throat> so, we found a jug rebuild kit. Uh, it was kind of, it was a little pricey. It was 99 bucks. I know you can pick these things up on eBay. These whole units here for a two something, uh, remanufactured or refurb, 250, maybe 300, and then you can pick up a new one for around 350, something like that in that range, uh, give or take. But anyway, here's a new jug. This come from an eBay seller, a little, little Red Barn, I believe, is his name. Uh, he was the only one that advertised a jug with a piston and gasket kit. So we got the jug. We got the piston. There's a part number on the piston. Okay, all right. So <clears throat> we're going to profit from someone else's mistake. And we're going to do our jug replacement on this two-stroke, on this blower. So the first thing we did was we cleaned our gasket surface after we pulled the, the machine all down. And I'm sorry I didn't catch the portion where I pulled it down. Uh, but I got all the parts here and we're going to put it back together in front of you. And so that's what this video is about. How to rebuild your two-stroke when some uneducated idiot or by mistake uh, adds regular fuel to the, to the tank and doesn't add the two-stroke oil that's required uh, so we'll cut the video here and we'll get started and then we'll come back all right so we pulled the wrist pin out it just comes out with a c-clip or a a uh, I don't know what do I, whatever you want to call it we call them oh Jesus clips or, or C clips whatever um, and that's your old piston you still have one in there this little notch is a relief note that the, the skirt on the piston is faced this way and the exhaust side had the short skirt so that's the exhaust side that faces this way now this is factory now unless I don't know something and the factory put it together wrong that's how it's going back together now I'm holding these spacers in place because they want to fall out on you. You pull these spacers off. This is your needle bearings right here. Ooh, yeah. Okay, it's a roller bearing, needle bearing, and their job is to, of course, rotate around the wrist pin for the piston. So you want to kind of set those on, see if they'll stay on, and leave leave well enough alone with that. Now. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to get our piston ready. We want to have a little two-stroke oil handy and all that stuff. Okay. Now, 
let's see if we can do this right. Okay, all we have to do is remember that the reliefs for the C clips face the exhaust side, which is this side. And that's the short side of the skirt, sure enough. Like that. Alright. Now that's good. Now this little pin shoved in the piston in the piston here looks like where your ring gap goes. Okay, so that's one of your ring gaps. And then you get some of this cardboard out. Right over here is another ring gap. So rings are self-explanatory. Now, there's an arrow on this piston, and there might have been one on this. Hmm. I don't know what that arrow means exactly, but... It looks like they point, the points to, towards the um, exhaust side. Well, we're going to cut the video, and we're going to read this lengthy instruction uh, paperwork that, uh, even though it's for a chainsaw, it's okay. This little red barn was kind enough to send us this. Uh, anyway, here's a little red barn. In case you guys need to get, because I haven't found any other seller that sells the jug with the piston. Now, I don't know if this guy has any more or not, but he was the only guy in town that sold them both together. Alright. Alright, so the rings, looking at the rings, they look pretty much the same size. Pretty much the same thickness. I didn't get a micrometer on them, but I'm going to assume that they're about the same. They do have reliefs in them, cut, right here. Okay, in the rings. Now I'm going to assume that these reliefs fit in conjunction with that needle pin that's in there to keep them from rotating around and getting off course, uh, lining up with each other and losing compression. So, I may be doing this different than other people, but I'm going to try to attempt to put this ring on. Could take the long side and go this way, but I'd prefer not to. Uh, now these rings are made out of carbon, I think. They snap. They will snap on you. Very, pretty easy. So I want to try to get this as close as I can. I know in the past I've had a great deal of trouble with these carbon rings. And I have caused them to snap. It's a pain in the ass to try to jump over two grooves, or well, one groove. But carefully it can be done. Okay, I got, I'm over one groove in the middle, and I don't want to jump in yet, but I do want to stop myself from jumping in the first groove, like this, see, and he really wants to, but I got him clear, like so. E. okay, that's all right. You're jumping. We're not there yet. What you don't want to do is hyperextend these, or stretch them, crack them, fracture them, or do anything like that. I really hate to put a screwdriver on this, but I might have to. There we go. No, I don't. Alright. Alright, so one. now we got one ring. As you can see, when it closes on that relief like that, it compresses like that. It doesn't go around. So that's one ring, pretty tight ring. We're gonna go with the second ring right here. Now, does that go that way? Nope. Flips around just like that. See? I see the notch relief cut out. Right. That self pin thing. Self-explanatory, right? I guess the big task would be when you put this in the jug to make sure these rings compress properly and not overlap or fo be forced in their place. Because you don't want them to get stuck like these did. Yeah, those rings are. See that where it's stuck, and scarred. And then you got another one right there with a little relief notch. Same thing. All right. 
So we got that. Oh, and by the way, I did put one clip in this side that they gave us, that Redborn gave us with the piston kit. I put the side on that's facing the blower because I didn't take the engine. I didn't remove the engine from the the, the block from the the uh, blower housing. Uh, I'm trying to cheat and take a shortcut by not taking all this off. I don't want to get into that. So I do have these things in the way of the jug. There is a way I can yeah. manipulate it down. Oh, remember before you put the piston on, let's put the cylinder gasket on. Which would be... Not this guy. Is that it this guy? Of... Yeah. Sure, looks, sure looks like it fits. Does that look like that guy? Sure does. Yeah, sure does, doesn't it? Let's see. How's that look? Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay. And we got that guy in a place. Uh, this is your intake exhaust. I'm sorry, carburetor exhaust. And then intake to carburetor. Then intake to bolt to cylinder head. This is intake to cylinder head. Oh. This is intake to carburetor. And this is, of course, because it's got a lead in it or a synthetic. I don't know what it is. That goes to exhaust. So. We got that. Now we got our piston here. Remember you try to remember you want to try to do this without getting it full of sand and grit and all that shit. Now I'm gonna use two two stroke oil by itself. I'm gonna lubricate the rod roller baron here. The lower connecting roller baron. I don't want a dry start on this thing. I'm going to drop a few drops on the crank baron. Actually, there's two holes for that relief right there. And another hole for another relief there. Now this... Someone else may have a different idea on how to put this together, and I'm sure you do. But this is the way that I... have usually done it. And I've only re rebuilt only a few two strokes but you know they're pretty easy pretty self-explanatory I don't want to put too much oil on this because I don't want it to cake up and have ring seizure uh, and I'll put a little bit on the Baron just a little just enough. All right. Now, I'll keep this out because we'll put a little on the wrist pen. Um, now, next, what I what I was debating how I was going to do this. I think next, what I want to do is get this guy in the cylinder first. So I put a little oil left over around a cylinder like this make sure I don't have a dry start with this nobody likes a dry start all right next up I'm gonna say exhaust side intake side intake sides always got the crap on it the extra uh, Hole, whatever. Yeah, extra holes and stuff like that for the intake because I don't really see I don't see any reeds on this. Um, so we're gonna say wrist pan that way, intake that way, exhaust that way. So we say piston goes that way, right? Towards exhaust, short side, bottom. Okay, back. All right. Now let's try to compress our rings slowly and get them in. What I'm gonna do is start this. Now, people have tools for this. Uh, tiny pieces of sheet metal to start this stuff. That slip in here and hold the rings down. You probably use these on a... You know, it would come in handy here, but... Who wants to go look for something that small for a two-stroke like this to compress two rings? I mean, if it's necessary... We're not building an eight second race car here, okay? So, we don't need that. If you're careful and you 
nice and easy with it you can get it down okay now doesn't feel like any rings are stuck on me that's good it's like the rings are free they're not jamming against each other now I pulled it out just enough to have the ring still compressed and the wrist pin showing that's the way I want to put it on if I can because remember I have to maneuver this jug down past this housing I figure If I do it that way, it'll work out. Make sure your reliefs are still in there. I mean, your uh, shims on both sides of your wrist pin stay in there. Both sides of your rod, I mean, stay in there. We'll lubricate your wrist pin a little bit. Try to get it to the point where it'll start. All right. Mm. Okay. Yeesh. Watch out. Yep. It's that easy to lose shit. Okay. <clears throat> Trying to keep it together. I'm sure you guys have a much easier way to do this. Just take the damn housing apart. What's throwing me off is I have to have this lined up perfectly and I got a slight bind here because the plastic is in the way. So I guess worst case scenario is what? I loosen a few, few of these torques. Bend back a little bit. And have the engine fall back just a little bit to clear this plastic, right? Does it sound like a smart idea? It sounds like a smart idea to me. All right. Well, let's do that instead of fumbling and fidgeting with this and causing any damage. Should be right? some T25 torques. Is that what this is? Yeah. I think so. I think these are if these are the same as the uh, bolts that go into the jug. Yeah. Okay. This is going to create some vibration, so I'm going to remove it. That was on this side, but and this went in like that. This is my new Milwaukee, never used before, this is the first time I've used it, impact driver. Comes with a 5.0 amp hour batteries. I'm not a spokesperson for Milwaukee, so I'm not paid to use their tools. In fact, I'm not paid by anybody. So, all right. So now I got him back a little bit. All right. Now I think I should give me the clearance I'm looking for for the new jug to fit on. All right. Or to cycle. To cycle. Whichever, whichever you prefer to call it. Past this point. All right. Let me eye up where I gotta go. Almost. All right. Got my wrist pin in. All right. Push my wrist pin in the rest of the way till it stops. Remember, I put the clip on the other side, and I got my new one here. I don't have to grab it like this. On the ears, and try to get it in. There we go. That was freaking easy. Good. This shit's not hard, guys. I mean, I'm sure most of you are probably not even gonna watch this video, but it doesn't matter. 
there's some guy out there, or some girl, or somebody, or some guy, girl, out there, who needs to learn how to do this shit, or have some kind of illustration. So, I hope this helps them. Hope so, hope it helps them, whoever them are. Remember, you have to try to be careful today. Okay, so. Yeah, you have to be sort of gender neutral, uh, so you don't offend anyone because everybody has feelings today. Back in the 80s, nobody had any fucking feelings. You could pretty much say whatever you wanted, and they just uh, didn't give a shit uh, because the world wasn't so focused on being a victim. But I'll save my philosophies for another day. I'm going to try to get my bolts in here, which are kind of fun. Looks fun, doesn't it? That's what needle nose are for, right? And do something like I used to do back in the day. Do some shit like this. Fold up a piece of paper. Take your Torx. Jam it into the paper. Or any other kind of shim. Use it to hold as a hold down. Shit. Let me use my Milwaukee, trusty Milwaukee extension. That's too long for me to work with. But it's the only thing I got small enough to fit inside of here. Hey, that worked out great. And guess what happens? The paper disappears when you pull it off. Yeah, it just stays right there on the top of the bolt, which will disappear when you uh, are using a blower. Okay, getting this guy started. We'll pause the video here. So we yeah. Okay, so you get the concept. Okay, so we got the the head on the head the jug on we're gonna set this to mode one so we don't over tighten it all right we have the hammer engaged from what I understand this thing puts out 150 foot pounds of torque at max yeah I don't think we need that kind of torque on this Just enough to put a little dent in the gasket. Am I on? Yep. Did it stop? Yeah. <clears throat> That's it. Hmm? That's a few inch pounds. Use as a gauge. Come on. There, there. All right, see a little smush in my gasket, not too bad. Let's tighten this up, huh? Yeah, I'll tighten that up, get that motor tight, that engine tight again. Should have tightened middle up, doesn't matter. Middle first, always make a habit of that. See, and here's my little goofy paper shim that works. Been using that since the age of what, 11? When our only form of transportation to pick up our girlfriends were on mini bikes. Alright, so we got that. Feels pretty good. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Hell of a lot more compression than we had before. Yeah. I could actually hold my finger over that. Another seat clamp. I'll put that in the shed with the rest of the junk from all the shit I've rebuilt. Oh yeah, that's, that's way the way more it than should before. feel. Definitely. Now, did I put a compression tester on it? No. no. Do I want to waste my time with that? No, not unless it doesn't run properly. Then do most backyard um, mechanics have a compression tester? For this? No, they don't. Yeah, no. So, we're not a professional shop. 
We're just a do-it-yourselfer, backyard mechanic, uh, if that's what you want to call us. All right, so intake, intake side here. Takes this intake. It's clean, self-explanatory. Line up the shit. Put it on. Remember I said this was the intake gasket. Mm. Yeah. It had a uh, that extra what's you call it there that mm. extra port. Right. That's that thing. Yeah, there we go. Isn't that good, yeah. Yeah, I remember they had a big long gasket on, and we thought that was a somebody put a big long gasket on there on purpose. But I guess that's how they ship them off. No, this is pretty much factory. It's half the fins covered. All right. I'm sure there's a reason for that. Not really. Sure. If you're anal retentive, you have like you know problems with this kind of shit. Just Go ahead and take a pair of scissors and cut this gasket out so that you don't have this big flap if you don't want it. If it bothers you. If you were one of those kids that, you know, had to have all your coloring right in line. You couldn't color outside the lines and you're special like that, go ahead and cut this gasket. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. Would you call that tight? I would say so. When you're dealing with plastic? Yeah, I mean, it this is. looks like ABS, right? It does. Built much like a, a 1980s uh, uh, sub submachine gun, right? ABS plastic, piece of shit. All case. right. Some kind of black case. No, the actual guns are built out of that shit. ABS plastic, not like a Glock. I, I don't know if a Glock is ABS or not. I just know they're moving away from them. But the military is using a SIG now. And a SIG is plastic. So, as far as, as far as I know, it's just, I don't know too much about firearms. Oh, yeah. We got our carburetor next. Right. So, what's next? Uh, a brand new carburetor. Brand new. From China. Yeah. Well, that's kind of not new. Alright, so here's the part number for that $15 carburetor you can pick up from China, right? Just in case you want to know. Just in case. We're going to keep both of our carburetors. The, the Chinese one and the, the factory one. I'd rather use a Husqvarna genuine carburetor, but uh, I think this carburetor has been sitting up for a while. Oh, wow. They give us fuel on and all. Look at that. That's good. I'll get into that later if I need it. They give us a filter, man, for 15 bucks. 15 bucks, we get a piece of foam, we get some fuel line, we get a fuel filter, we get a bunch of primer bulbs, two of them to be exact. It's pretty cool. And of course we get our carburetor, which is awesome. What the fuck is this shit on the bottom what of it? What is that? On the top. Is this in case I want to manually run it? Maybe. Wait, no. That's actually what's underneath this cover. How about Just that? Just the cover, huh? Yeah. That's all that is. Shit. Isn't that nice? Okay. I can do this. Yeah, the cover pushes off. I haven't taken this shit off yet. Look, I see a clip, I think, right here, right? The other side pushes off. Look, it wants to come off. Yeah, well, it should be hooked on that side. This side should have a clip on it. Hey, there we go. Look at that. Beautiful. Well, that's primitive. <laughs> It's beautiful. Hit the trigger for me. Okay. Okay, this is our stopping point for throttle. So throttle adjustment screw. I got gotcha. you. What the fuck is this red thing? Choke? No. No, I can't it's not choke, is it? I don't know what that is. Something that the Chinese decided to put in there. No, it's, they make a lot of these parts universal. Hmm. Yeah, you you say so. They had two part numbers on that box. Yeah, look at it, this. Okay. What the fuck? Hmm? Am I looking at something wrong here? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Try to turn it around, like this way. Okay. There we go. So I do turn it around that way. And it's because not, of the throttle. It's, okay. Yeah, okay. But now look at that. It's the wrong side of the carburetor. What the hell? Yeah. 
<sighs> you gotta love the Chinese, man. Okay, so what's this horse shit? This is the way it's supposed to go, right? Yeah, the throttle flaps in the same position. Bolts in the same position, sort of. Well, this looks the same, right? Yeah, yeah, two small holes, two semi-larger holes. Okay, so that's right. And what's up with this side? Why is that all indentated like that? Why is this hole at the top bigger than now at the bottom? What the, is this made for a bigger engine? Or universal? Might be, I'm saying that's universal. You think so? <clears throat> yes. You think maybe we should just try to use our original carburetor? That would probably be a good idea. Yeah, so you think we just wasted 15 bucks on a Jama Wama, whatever this is? On a Jainad. Yeah, vagina. Yeah, I can't even. <laughs> I think I wasted my money on a vagina. So, Jinma. we'll try to use our original carburetor here. Yeah, because remember, that wasn't the problem of not firing. The problem of not firing was the... <laughs> not firing, you mean not, not, not even over. Not even compressing. Ah, shit. Well, that works. All right. Uh. Okay. What was next? Was it gasket? All right. Gasket. Yeah. All right. Carburetor to intake, right? Look, we got shit on here. We gotta get off. Oh yeah. Um. Got it. Go. We'll come back to this. Yep. So this is how it lines up. Carburetor uses the screws from the filter, uh, bolts from the filter. Gasket lines up. No, self-explanatory. Uses the bolts from the filter here. You go through the filter all the way through the carburetor. Drop the gasket on the ground. Get sand in it. You go, and it goes down like this. <laughs> Bond up through. Okay. Now let's get this thing started. By the way, always try to start your bolts without the impact first, because you get too impatient. If I ever catch one of you guys at a Pet Boys or any other place starting my lug nuts with an impact gun. With a pneumatic impact gun, we're gonna have a problem. Start them by hand and then use your impact. Can't tell you how many times I've had to replace studs on a vehicle because somebody brought it to the shop. And somebody was in a rush. That should be enough. Smash this gasket. Yeah, it's just plastic with nuts inside there. ABS, like I said. Probably my next thing I'll do would be put the exhaust side up. Muffler? Yeah. Muffler? Okay. okay, that muffler gasket looks pretty good, huh? Let's just take it off. Alright. Okay, exhaust gasket. Weird, your lower gasket kind of intersects with it, unless you bend it a little. It does feel like a lead gasket. You probably can't use this in Cali. Um, I would say that it would work this way, where the gaskets overlap each other, kind of on the bottom, just kind of makes it protrude a little bit. here at the bottom so you gotta put in which is in my box I would recommend tightening these two bolts and then tightening the lower after because it lowers a brace so 
Remember your exhaust pipe is very important on a two stroke because it helps regulate the output for performance. A lot of two strokes won't run without an exhaust pipe. Not properly. It's not like a four stroke. You could have pretty much popped the exhaust the uh, muffler off and uh, run with no pipe and bend your intake valve, your exhaust valve, sorry. Alright. What do you think? Shall we give it a try? Got the gas tank. Hopefully. Really? Like this? Good. See how it runs. Give me the gas tank then. Okay, right. let's go. Okay. Here's my Husky Bonnie gas tank. With the screws, I always put back in their places so I know where they go. Or I don't lose them. I'll set this in place. We'll lift up the machine. Gain access to where the screws go. Bottom of plastic bullshit tank. Okay, well, we'll come back to this when we have this hooked up. Alright, Okay, so. we're hooked up. Looks like we're pumping fuel in. Or something's happening. I see stuff moving in the pipe. Yeah. No, so, fine. remember when we got this thing, we've never heard it run. So it's never ran in our care yet. So we're going to give it a shot and see if we can get it to run. Our plug is not really tight. It's just kind of semi-tight. See. Uh, run Stop. it down. Yeah, it's, it's in run mode right now. Yeah. Let's see what kind of compression we have compared to last time. Oh, yeah. Better. A lot better. The compression's increasing, actually. Let me choke it. I think that's a choke. Uh oh, there we go. Throttle it. Yeah. Tighten up the spark plug to, to ensure compression, full compression. And uh, I want to break it in by letting it idle and then revving it up. Breaking it in, you know, idle and revving up, revving up and break idling. It, it. Yes, I don't want to let it break in just sitting there idling because this thing runs wide open. Yeah. I think that thing is supposed to idle at about 12 to 1500 according to Husqvarna's. Service yeah. Well, that's good. Not too tight. It's a tiny shank plug. Okay. I guess I wasted my money on a Chinese carburetor, but it was only 15 bucks, right? So I have something to fall back on. Better. It looks like I need to I need to tune it a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that. We'll put the covers and all that on later and close the video, right? I would say so. All right. Here we are, about an hour after assembly. Full throttle, letting off for idle. Piston, piston and rings are broken in. 